Hi! Today I'll be walking you through how to create a very easy drawing application using the multi touchless SDK. We start off by creating a new project in Visual Studio. We select Windows, Windows Application, and then we choose a name for our project. Let's call it Sample. Visual Studio will generate the defaults, and we're able to see an empty Windows form and a basic project. If we switch to the code view, we can also see that the only code we have is a constructor for the form. To start using the multi touchless SDK, you first need to download the SDK to a local folder and expand the zip file to get the DOLs. With those in hand, you can go on and add our SDK as a reference to your sample project. In order to do that, you need to right-click References in the Solution Explorer, choose Add Reference, go to the Browse tab, and finally select the DOLs that you expanded from the help file. I'll go on and select Touchless Lib DOL. This adds a reference to the manager version of the actual SDK. Further ahead, we will need to add a second DOL to the debug folder. I'll talk more about it when we're ready to debug our application. All set, let's start creating our application. The first thing we need to do is add some using statements. Since we have our SDK reference too, we can just include using touchless lib. And let's also include using system.drawing.imaging for some bitmap functions we will use in the future. Now, the first thing we need to do in the form is to handle the load event. We can go on to the events on the form and double click so we create a default handler to the load event. And we're going to set up collecting the first camera that the Touchless Manager itself has access to. In order to use Touchless Manager, we need to create an instance of it. I can call it touch, and now we will have it available for our class to use. Once we do that, we can go on to our load event and iterate over all the cameras that Touchless Live has found on your systems. We can just do a for each statement. So for each camera enumerated in cameras method of the Touchless Manager, we will want to check if the camera is not new, because then we're going to use this as the first camera, and we can break off out of the for each loop. For simplicity purposes, let's just say it selected the first known known camera it finds in touch.camera. So we're not worry about handling multiple cameras. Now that I picked the camera, we need to start collecting images from that camera. We can do this by telling Touchless Manager that this first camera is the current camera. Once you set up the camera, we can actually hook up the event on the camera. So let's go ahead and handle the event on image captured. And Visual Studio is helping me by providing a shortcut to create a new event handler. I'll take advantage of it and press tab. So it's creating a new event handler of that event. And if I hit tab once more, it will actually insert the implementation of that event handler. This new event handler will be called every time a new frame is captured from the camera. I'm going to remove this default implementation and let's do our own. If you look at camera events args, you'll see that part of those are the images that are actually captured. This happens on a background thread, and it's not in the main form's UI, so what I want to do is save it off. So I'm going to create a bitmap, let's call it B, and I'm going to keep it in my form, and whenever I get this event, I'm going to set that image as being the image on the camera. That stores it off. Now I need to display this image somewhere on my Windows form. What I can do here is go to the toolbox and create a picture box. Let's pick an arbitrary size. So I'm just readjusting it here. And let's make sure that it doesn't tile. OK, let's go back to our code. Since we're saving the image every time it's getting captured, what I need to do is hook up some kind of paint in the image box. So to do that, I can just write picture box one dot paint and use the same syntax for coding a new event handler. We can just let Visual Studio generate those events for us and we'll get this callback. Let's erase the default and implement painting by using the images that are captured. In order to make it happen, we have to tell the picture box to invalidate every time we get an image captured. And then again, in the paint, I simply need to draw that image onto the picture box. We don't need to worry about stretching or image sizing at this moment. Also, I want to make sure that the image I'm capturing is not new. And in the paint method, there is an event args. 
Using the graphics property, I can draw by just using Draw Image Unskilled and Clipped. It. I have to pick which image to draw, and that's our bitmap B that we have stored. And the rectangle can come from the picture box. This should draw the image. One last thing I need to do before trying to run it is to copy the assembly over. And I'm going to do a few things in the project itself. I'm running on a 64-bit machine, and Touchless Live only works on x86 projects. So what I need to do is go to the project properties, go to build, and change my platform target to x86. That's one step. The second step we'll do is go behind the scenes and do a build. Let's make sure that everything runs correctly. The build succeeded, so we're fine. I'll then go back to Touchless Live SDK directory, which I'm recapturing now, and you will be able to see the file webcamlive.dll. You just need to copy it to, into your project directory before you do a run. It needs to go into your bin slash debug directory. Once that's copied it in, we should be able to run the project and see at least that the image has been captured from the camera. Great, so what I have here is a camera pointing down at my desk. I have a white background and you can see my finger being captured. I'm moving a simple post-it note with a green marker on it, which I'll use later in the demo. Okay, so let's stop running this and I'll move on to the next stage, which is getting that marker to play with the camera image itself. So what I want to do is set up capturing a marker and there are many ways in which you can define for the system what a marker is. For this demo, what we'll do is a simple capture of the green square and use it as a marker. There are also many ways which in your application you can let the user choose mechanisms to select a marker. For this demo, we'll keep a very simple approach. We're going to let the user click on an area of the screen and say that's the center of the marker. So let's go back to our form and create a button in the form. Let's just change the text on the button to add marker. So this button will let us toggle a switch where we stop capturing live frames from the camera and we grab only the last image. As mentioned above, we will allow the user to click in the center of the marker area and define that area as a marker of the system. To enable that we do double click our button and we need to just double click it and get an event handler. When the button is clicked, we want to capture the current image from the camera. So we can save that off to a current copy. Let's call it C. So this bitmap C is the image we get from the current camera in touch. And we also need to tell the picture box to set its background to be that saved image. Another thing we need to do is to disable the button so the user can't click again until the actual marker is defined. We can do that by saying button1.enable equals false. And the last thing we have to do is disable the panting temporarily while we are in this marker definition mode because we are using just a static picture that got captured at the time we press the add marker button. We can simply use the state of the button to define what to do. If the button 1 is enabled, then we keep on capturing images. To finish out the functionality, we need to go into the picture box and handle an event of when the mouse was actually clicked. The way we can do that is by finding the event list, and when there is a mouse clicked in the picture box, we can add a handler. So we just double click, mouse click, and create this event handler. In this case, all we need to do is pick what the user clicked and create a marker. So let's create a marker M, which can be found in our touch manager. Now let's set the parameters. First, we can just call it marker. Then, the image defines an image in which the marker is derived from. We know we have saved that image into the picture box. So we can just use the background image of the picture box as the marker. Also, we need to decide what point is the center of the marker. Again, the events arg of the mouse defines what it is. So we can create a new point by using e.x and e.y. And the last thing we need is a radius. 
The radius defines how big the marker is, and for simplicity's sake, we're going to just default it to 10 pixels because this is about how big my marker is. From our SDK, there are many other ways from which you can create markers, but we just chose the simpler one to this demo. Okay, so once I created the marker, I can set up a couple of things in the marker. First, I want to highlight it. So when I look at the picture, I can just see where it is in the image. So I set marker highlight to true. There are some other things we can do with the marker by just using events from the marker itself. Uh, that's one of the nice things about the touchless SDK. Not only does it give back the image from the camera, but the marker events go back and tell you very useful information like the position of the marker and many other properties of the marker itself. So let's set up an event handler for the marker on change. Let's again let Visual Studio help us creating the event handler and actually the handler itself. So this event on change will call back every time the system detects that the marker is in the view of the camera and has moved around. So we can use that later. You can see how we can actually draw something by storing the position which the marker has passed by. We'll build that soon, but for now let's just run our project and double check that the marker can be set. One last thing before running, let's make sure that we enable the button again once the marker is created. All set? Let's run it now. Okay, now we can use our demo here. We can click Add Marker, which freezes the frame. You can't really see it, but I'm actually moving my post-it note and nothing is changing on my picture box, what means that the picture is frozen. So let's pick the center of the green marker, and that should release the button and highlight the marker, just the way we expected. For example, we can move the marker around, and you can see that it's tracking its position. So the last big thing we need to do is hook up the events back from the system into my application, so we can start drawing. So let's stop running it, and let's just go back to our code. Now we're going to implement a very simple way of drawing in the canvas. The easy way of doing that is creating a new bitmap and let's just call this additional bitmap an overlay. We want the bitmap overlay to be just exactly the same pixel size as what the camera is selecting. So let's set the overlay to be a new bitmap and use a constructor that let us define the size. Since we want this to match the size of the image captured, we can just use the width and height of our bitmap from the camera. Then the last parameter is our bitmap is the pixel format. So for our demo we can just use the pixel format 24 RGB. This simply says create a 24 bit RGB pixel bitmap of the right size of the camera width and height. Now we do not want to draw, want to draw anything into it directly. So we can just make that overlap transparent. We can do that by just using the method make transparent. Very simple. One more thing we need to do is pass this overlay as a drawing object in our picture box. We can do that by going back to our paint code and just order another draw image scaled and clipped using the overlay and our picture box as parameters. Okay, we're done with the paint method, but if you try to run it now, nothing would actually happen because we're not putting anything in the overlay. To fix it, we can go to our unimplemented on change method and set a pixel on the overlay whenever we get an event back. Before doing that, let's think about the parameters we need to choose. It asks for two coordinates and a color. In the marker, there are several items. One is event data, which has a bunch of properties. You can read more specific information about it in our documentation. Two of these properties are the X and the Y coordinates, which give us the position of the marker. Great, we have the two coordinates, and for the color, let's just go ahead and pick black. Okay, great. Another thing I want to mention is that in the event args, in the event data, there is a present variable and that actually tells whether the marker is being seen currently in the image or not. So before pulling the X and Y coordinates, we should make sure the marker is present. One last thing, since we're updating the overlay in a background thread, we need to make sure we don't try to paint the picture box at the same time. So let's add some lock statements to the onChange 
and to the paint method. Great, now we're ready to run our application. Once we click on add marker, we click on the marker, it goes back to the state where the button is enabled, but now the marker is actually being tracked. And as I'm moving through, we can see this drawing, and we're now painting colors onto the screen. Okay, this concludes our very simple demo on how to use a touchless SDK and how to manipulate cameras and set up markers. You can use it now to create your own interesting ideas using our SDK. We really value your feedback and thank you so much for watching.